Good morning, uh, my friends. Welcome, welcome for those of you turn, tuning in. Uh, again, my name is uh, Roman Singh Nahal. Let's get right to it. Transaction number two. This is uh, Roman Real Estate Group, uh, and this is basically a reflection uh, of, of diaries of exactly what you know what goes on, kind of behind the scenes. Um, that even, you know, the most savvy commercial developers, investors may not know as far as our world of real estate uh, agents. And of course, if you are in the commercial uh, world as I grew up in, I mean, it is the wild, wild west uh, compared to the residential world, which uh, in my opinion is uh, far more structured, uh, which is a good thing, absolutely. Um as far as contracts, forms, options, uh, and ways to do things. So my hopes is to give you guys some value into that world and give you guys some value because from that world, um, like any world, knowledge is infinite and uh, many good things or useful things could come. And if there's just one new thing you pick up from this quick 10 minutes, I like to try to keep it to, um, then it was worth it. And I'm sure there's something I could learn uh, from you as well. But Boom, let's go into this. Um, I always uh, love to change my client's name to protect the innocent, but this uh, a gentleman is a, a dream uh, to work with, very bright mind, huge heart, investor, uh, client of mine, and uh, bright mind, double finance uh, major, so uh, loves the numbers, like myself. Uh, built up his, you know, dad's business from absolute scratch and, um, holds it on his shoulders every single day. So, um, very cool to be able to work with him. His, uh, let's call him Bob. Bob's goal was very simple. Um, Bob has learned from uh, every aspect of real estate, from apartments, etc. But as far as monthly streams of income, uh, he uh, he loves multifamily units, uh, as do I. And uh, when you start to understand the right niche of them, um, they're uh, far more out there than you realize. Uh, and he loves the four units or less aspect um, and getting those monthly um, streams of income. He's able to do a, a quick rental uh, analysis. Um, the you know deal that we're going to talk about that we executed was you know in Santa Clara County, but in a jurisdiction where there is no uh, rent control. Um, so if we ever go into, and we'll talk about the appraisal a little more, where you know the landlord is very nice and he's charging under um, market value, that can really hurt um, the previous uh, seller as well when it comes to this phase and they're actually trying to sell. So Bob gives me that task. Roman, find me that. Um, I love the small overhead, uh, and we're still getting monthly streams of uh, income. His headquarters for his business is in a rare enough, uh, enough spot where uh, it's very ideal. Um, he's such a blessing where he'll actually text me uh, already a listing and I won't have to do any hunting for him. I'll just, my real work and value will come in on the negotiating and the contract process. Um, Excuse my little pup uh, back there, but basically, so this is a town in Santa Clara County. Uh, we executed uh, the sale at uh, six hundred and uh, r- roughly around six to seven hundred thousand dollars. And what the beauty of uh, this place that I immediately fell in love: uh, two existing tenants, two units with an actual lot in the back, um, and enough which has been zoned in a approved to build uh, another, uh, but uh, I can't say enough about this property, but let me get to the nitty gritty of the deal, and I'm just blown away. I'm looking at this, and, you know, um, I can say that it's, uh, you know, in Santa Clara County, and just looking at it from October 2011 to, uh, you know, around April 2018, when I executed this deal, at one point, um, this same property was $119,000. And we're not talking way back when, uh, 2011, uh, versus 2018. Um, uh, this, uh, you know, this person as uh, I'm examining this, uh, they listed this property in January 2018 for about, um, you know, $692,000 and, and then kind of reduced, uh, the sale. And, um, another thing, as I came into it, as I contacted this, um, other agent, she was actually in cro- contract already. There was basically a deal, uh, there in front of us. Um, it was right at listing, not over, but, uh, my client really wants this property. So how can I find my way? So I still, 
to go out of my way, uh, reach out to the agent, still put a, put in an offer, speak to her first before making any type of offer. And obviously she makes me aware that she's in contract and we have very uh, strict code of ethics on what exactly you can do. And you can't be, you can't exactly have two offers, um, um, make two different offers on two different properties at one time, right? In, in the case that one may get accepted, but there's an actual contract car form is where the value comes in and the other agent degrees as well called a backup offer addendum. Now we could just verbally say, Hey, let me be your backup offer. But what this does is it essentially structure structures that yes, we are second in line in the very competitive Bay area. But the key here is what it allows you to do uh, is you are actually safe to make offers on other properties with this backup offer uh, addendum. So um, aside from that, uh, did our, our usual, uh, you know, want to be very organized as far as presenting a buyer's uh, package. First, for me personally, would come a cover page, and I love to throw in, um, you know, a picture there and a picture with the family uh, as well. So, you know, when, when reviewing offers, they can really see who this is uh, going to. Uh, we have your one-page pre-approval. Um, we'll talk more about that. Um, and I knew, and, and basically your contract form, and I can go over that um, of what's, you know, an actual offer at another time, but I want to focus on giving you guys the values I'm running up on six minutes here. So some key takeaways uh, from this, um, as far as the negotiation is concerned, uh, 1031 exchange, um, you know, can be a complex subject. It uh, didn't affect us in any way, but she just made it clear to me that, hey, you know, my clients are really in a rush, really in a rush, which in a way I almost wish she didn't because I love being honest and so, uh, uh, you know, through negotiation deal, but it, it didn't exactly give her, uh, leverage with me knowing that, um, you know, she had basically hit the person in front of us with a notice to perform 48 hours notice to perform because they weren't exactly, um, having some lending issues um, and, you know, she was having a very difficult time dealing with them to begin with. So um, it kind of pays to also be nice. You don't always have to be mean during negotiations. Um, and she really enjoyed uh, working with me. And I enjoyed working uh, with her. It worked out great. But um, fast forward, my biggest concern was the appraisal. Like I mentioned before, um, you know, I'm not going to go to loans. I'm not going to appraisals because that's not my strong suit, right? Uh, but one thing I, I knew was we were going to come up with some type of issues with the uh, appraisal as far as what it would be worth. For example, if you know it's listed at six hundred and seventy-five thousand, it if it appraises far lower at six sixty, which it did, uh, my client would have to make up the difference, say in down payment or somehow. So this is always a concern because if your client, you know, um, can't exactly it doesn't have the funds to do this, uh, there can be uh, an issue, which is why we go into the contract with, you know, an appraisal contingency, first the property inspection contingency, and then finally the loan contingency, which um, are basically three things that say only if, and um, these things have to be removed, and it's a way to protect myself and, and our clients, and again, contracts that are a little more structured um, in that way, so these would be check boxes in uh, California and Santa Clara County, so um, going through that, yes, it did come in at 660, there was some issues with uh with that, so we thought, okay, how can we be creative? This is where, you know, I make my money as far as uh, value. So what I was able to do is I was able to negotiate with her when, when trying to remove the property inspection. We had some concerns, very uh, old property. I would say close to 100 years in the middle of uh, downtown. Um of, of a town that was, you know, after a property inspection and we use that detailed property inspection to kind of leverage kindly, um, with some things, a huge tree that was running through and causing debris to go into the gutter. And we know what happens when the gutter gets, uh, filled and little dinks and dents. So I approached her and said, well, why don't we do this? Also leveraging and remembering, uh, that he's in a bit of a hurry, uh, is, Hey, it's no cost to you, but from the closing cost, why don't we, um, you know, we started at 15000 We ended up at $10,000, a credit to my client, $10,000 from the closing costs, from the transaction. So he can then use this money in return to take care of these damages uh, in a fast way. And you can go and be about your way. Because remember, this seller was in a bit of a hurry and a time crunch because they're doing a 1031 exchange or needs to be timed correctly and already had in Truckee a cabin property. 
property that they uh, uh, wanted and selected. So this was something they agreed to. Not only was I able to, you know, start off from a deal that, you know, I didn't think was even going to happen as a backup offer, was able to execute for my clients, negotiate along the way, extend um Deadlines when needed, share information openly, um, and the craziest part was this was a 15-day close. Uh, my client has great lenders who, who can do this, and here in my mind, you know, I'm getting paid a little quicker, so I'm thinking, oh, yeah, 15-day close, this is going to be awesome, but really, I never had to work harder in my life because everything in that typical 30 to 45-day close was sped up times three, so uh, a lot of coordinating and talking um behind the scenes with my teams uh, and so forth for it to appear crystal uh, clear and smooth for my client. And that only comes through uh, hard, hard work and, and coordinating and surrounding yourself with a great team of, you know, transaction coordinators, lenders, very sharp lender in this uh, case. Uh, I'll go ahead and plug him. Uh, uh, optimal loans. Um, feel free to hit them up, but um, that's it guys. You know, I love, Speaking from it, winging it, I will try to do this in writing form too, so maybe it'll be more valuable to you, but you could always uh, pause and rewind, but uh, there are some things that I feel you uh, may not know and might actually bring value uh, to you uh, along your journey. I wish you guys uh, the best, um, and uh, until transaction number three, take care.